Alright, people. Here we are in Vorak. Four point something. Where are you? 4.11 gravity. I explored this planet so much. This place is bristling with enemy. Um, but this this will be a short episode, and I'm just walking. I'm just gonna walk you guys through the ship that I have finished publishing to uh, to Steam. The link is now available. The link for all the support craft is now available. But I thought I'd walk you through. I, I made a video, which I'm really happy with. I was getting all misty-eyed making the video because the music was so fun. Hey, look, my sh um, my floor is damaged. Now, actually, the walkthrough version isn't exactly the same. Because I made some changes. Oh, look, a texture got lost. I noticed this as a bug in Imperion. Sometimes, when you reopen after a save, some of the textures... Especially on these like diagonal pieces, the textures disappear. Uh, but anyways, anyways, so the this is the Prospector. It is an industrial frigate. It is still, in the grand scheme of things, a pretty small ship. I mean, it's probably big by Imperion standards, but it, by standards of like modern sci-fi, it's kind of small. You know, crew of eight. So we got the captain's chair, we've got a communications chair, we've got a navigation chair. These people collaborate to deal with whatever's out there. Um, nobody else really needs to bother them. Um, ventilation. We got two forward um, bunks. Every bunk comes with a shower, a private shower, because, you know, this crew needs it. Private bed. They, this is sort of like the floor model, you know, you'll dress it up once you own a copy of this ship, you'll dress it up yourself. Um, the There are six stations out back for miners, and so but there are two stations for crew, and you can see there's a little bit of overlap because there are three seats up here. Presumably senior staff, like the old time miners, will probably have secondary positions running the ship. But anyways, those who dedicatedly run the ship have these smaller quarters with a view, because you know the view is in part just in case, um, just in case there's things to see to alarm them and they need to be alert about. The other six quarters, like the senior miners, will have this bunk because it's larger, but also still has a view. Whereas, I thought that wasn't running for a second. Whereas, the less senior quarters are still pretty big, bigger than the, those who run the ship, um, but they don't really have a view because it's not really possible to offer one. Anyway, these are the less senior miners, and they get such luxurious quarters specifically because they spend all day um, doing dirty work. So they need to be able to come home to something nice. Um, so you can see there's, there's six large quarters and two small quarters on each side of the ship. Um, on this side, on the port side, there is the cafeteria and the bar. Unfortunately, I, there wasn't really a design that would let me wrap this around, which made me sad, but you know, there's only so much. Um, you can food process. You have a fridge. Uh, and then there's a restroom. Uh, sort of commons. The, everybody gets a private shower, but that, nobody really needs a private bathroom, not on such a small ship. From here, you can see outside, just in case you need to, or because you find it entertaining, though right now it doesn't seem to be a good time for it. Uh, or inside, just in case, you know, you're taking a break, but maybe your crew chief or something needs to wave you down and say, Come on out here! On the other side, as you saw, there was a lounge <clears throat> in the video. The sort of sales pitch video for this ship, presuming there was, you know, and uh, also, see again, same thing on the other side. Uh, oh, look, two different colors. Great. Um, again, they have these monitors all over the ship, just in case you happen to be lounging, but you, you know, out of the corner of your eye, you notice, wait a minute, something's wrong. Uh, but they got a old-timey flat screen, and but the local computer store, or the core of the ship, it, it jokingly, in my video, can store up to 6 million 16K hollow movies. Um, feature length, so... And who knows what feature length means in their time. But again, same on the opposite. You can see outside, you can see inside. Now, uh, let's see. So this is pretty much the living area of the ship. This is the quarantine slash medical lab. And there is no access 
to the living area of the ship that does not go through this room. So this is a pinch point for health concerns. No pathogens. There is this uh, ramp that goes down. I am not going to make the mistake again of going down it because at 4G's I could not get back up. I had to stop recording and start over. Um, the uh, medical thing has the shower and a UV. You don't want to spend a lot of time in here, but you know, sort of help disinfect you. Uh, same thing on this side, except the restroom instead. Uh, now, as a pinch point, you either can go down that up, come up that ramp, or come through here. Through here, there's the uh, elevator, the float tube, whatever, to the top of the ship, which might be for maintenance reasons, but also so you can have access to the launch pad and the shuttle. The the uh, I, I don't trust trying to fly this in 4G's. It might be fine. It might not. It might fall right out of the sky and I'll never get it back on again. Um, I did notice this pylon, well, whatever you want to call it, it's it inverses funny. It's not the end of the world, but I kind of wish they could inflect differently. But anyways, oi. Um, so this is the Scarab. It is designed to come with the Prospector class ship. It is well suited uh, to be paired with this as a support craft, but it's basically just to go around, look, scout ahead, decide, or help the crew decide where they would like to be. Alright, hold on, I'm getting... Oh, yep, yep, gravity makes everything difficult. Oh, and you know what, I forgot something. So here's the readout. Through the uh, very thick glass, you can sort of get a uh, sense of what's going on in here in case it's under quarantine. But anyways, not necessarily part of the living area, but shunting off. The front engine compartment uh, is shared. Like, this is one of the few commonalities between this ship and its predecessor, the Wanderer, which is merely a scout class frigate. Um, you got all the engines. This is slightly different than the published version. But uh, you have gravity, and on the other side is the mirror of this room, and the gravity generator there is turned off, but is available as a redundancy in case this one is damaged or destroyed. Uh, RCS. Um, in the published version, there are no engines at this central level. So there's two, two, two out back, or four out back, four out front, and I think a couple less RCSs, because it turns out to... <coughs> wow, excuse me. Basically, they changed the game out from under me in the middle of the season. So we went to Alpha 15, computation became completely different, and this ship would absolutely not function if published. So I had to, and it turns out the RCSs are really computationally intensive, as are the engines, uh, if not quite so much. So I had to yank a whole bunch of those out and some engines to get it even to 73% efficiency, which I can't, won't, you won't see it here because this, the version I'm showing you now is. Um, not the published version, but it's close, it's close. So again, like I said, on the other side, it's the same, but there's the redundant gravity generator. So you can go up here, or you can come out through here into the foundry, and all of these, again, you can only access the front place for the living areas through the trunk point of health control. Open, jeebus. Okay, so here's the computer core. Well, actually, this is the ammo access. Um, I've been collecting a lot over the years, not really uh, needing. There are sort of silos here for basic things, so you know which one to go to. You grab it and run. Um, ox oxygen good stuff. Here's the core. And I, I'm not sure. I think under here is the Tier 2 computer. And that wasn't even uh, remotely enough. 500 grand between the two of fourth room. I think I got it down to... Well, tier 3 is with the published version, which is 1.5, so I think I got it down to 1.8 or so by doing a lot of leaning down. But uh, this is still present, it's just that the uh, auxiliary or adjunct cores are sort of uh, off in different parts of the ship. So here you go, here we go. Diff uh, sorted by weapon type, you know. If ever the ship got raided, they could technically do something. Oxygen supply, uh, gear, well, gear and repair station for gear. And in the foundry are six silos. Each one of these is paired with a harvesting craft. So this one uh, is a mole rat Mark I. It has the Mark I, it's just, it's super cheap. You can make these really quick and easy. 
uh, very early in the game, and they've got bores, and, you know, if you don't have much gear yet, this will be plenty useful to you. The published version has only very slight adjustments, including the, um, the, uh, the ID number, I suppose. Uh, same thing on this side. So you got Starboard S, and you got Alpha, Beta, Gamma. It always, for this ship, and I guess for Valdry Forge stuff in general, it always goes Alpha to Omega towards the front. I don't know why, it just ended up that way, and so I'm sticking with it. Um, so, starboard and port, very important. Um, each, each, each one of these silos is paired with a ship, so you could technically have this ship be sort of a conglomerate of independent miners who are collaborating with a captain to... But each one of them is an independent operator. You could potentially do that. Here's a Mark II. The Mark II has is much um, more expensive to make, and you have to have more things unlocked. But you get the sort of plasma bores, which are uh, the, the laser drills, much more effective. And again, so each silo, they have their own personal walker, they have their silo, and a seat just in case there's rough business going on, they can sort of belt in. Here we have the bush rat. This is. I, it, there's no retractable thing, so I had to use. What the hell's going on? Hey, there's action in this episode. Do not go down the route. route. Okay, other side. I heard something explode. I heard something explode. I am really scared to go down that ramp because I'm probably not going to get back up. Oh, you know what I can do? Oh, gosh. Hello. That's a good thing the drone is not affected by gravity, isn't it? So, that gives us a chance to look at the ship from the outside. I did a lot of work to give it some texture. Hopefully it's good. I changed out the wings a good bit. That's That survived and made it into the uh, public version. Wait, now who's shooting? Oh, I see. The big one. Shut up, guys! You're, you're ruining my video! Um, but yeah, I changed this somewhat. Uh, I ch in the published version, a lot of this has um, gone really super light. It's not really meant to be armor, and that helped keep the weight of the ship down. Um, right, so let's uh, head back in. So like I said, the, this guy is more for harvesting plants. Those are for ore. Now, the ship itself... Even if it's scouted ahead, it's almost certainly going to have to pacify the immediate surroundings in order to safely, um, to safely start business. You know, these guys have no defenses. Their only defense is to run. They don't even have shields. They're very maneuverable. Oh, look, see, this is what I'm referring to. It's just apparently it wasn't done on that side. Um, they have to run for home to be completely safe. This guy will go out and soften the immediate surroundings of the landing spot or even take out potential enemy is, uh, installations. It's, you know, the the base model has merely Gatling guns here and they're all 15 millimeter. But it's pretty maneuverable, not as much as those guys, but it, it can hold its own and you can have two crew members, you know, the one up front is meant to do the driving, but technically either one could. And this guy is generally expected more to take personal control away from the AI on one of these and um, do some extra nice sharpshooting. So, let's see. And it, it's sitting on top of a basic repair node. I'm going to call it a node. So, here we have two forges. These are for the construction of things. They are automatically patched in this guy to this and this guy out here. So input, output, input, output. Um, this one has a hell of a lot of leftovers. It, both of them are full, I think. Not almost. I have so much stuff. Um, doing, uh, doing this the manual way tends to have some rewards. Anyways, um, there's some basic decorations here. Excess fuel. I, is more. Oh, good luck getting up the stairs in four gravities. I was kind of hoping, you know, the. Um, I might actually make it. I'm not gonna make it. All right. Well, just take my word for it that there is the repair thing, like right, right there. Okay. Then you got the engine compartments back here. This is the uh, port power plant. 
There's really not much going on. There's a lot of fuel cells back there. Probably too clustered, to be completely safe. But uh, I put in this sort of light pattern. Other than that, it, there's not a whole lot of function going on back here. There's a big engine back there. There's the uh, the power core. There, it's mirrors on the other side. Man, the lighting. Uh, now you, you meant to access the fuel through here. Oh, that's oxygen. That's still oxygen. Oh, here. You access the fuel through here. But there's quite a bit of extra fuel cells out back. Um, let's see. Again, same thing, mirror image. If one uh, is destroyed, you're going to hobble along, but you might still be able to actually get away with that remaining core. And of course, here we've got our shield. This is tier one shield. Uh, upgrading might be difficult. Pentaxid tank is ad adjacent to it. More RCS. Oh, the T2 I took out. I took that's. That is a million and a half CPU right there. That's no longer needed. This thing, and what I found is, so here's the warp core. What I found is that even having severely uh, whittled back on the RCS and engines, this, this ship still performed fine. Still performed fine. It, it, it was a little slower to turn, but it was not not a problem. So let's see, is there anything else to mention here? So, I mean, we can look at the specs. The specs are not quite valid anymore. I took a lot of pains to name everything. If I missed something, I think you should murder me because I worked really hard. Every single one, port, aft, down thrust, gamma, and again, f uh, back to forward, alphabetic gamma, so that helps you. These are a cluster of things up front, so um, aft, after, I think after is a typo. Oops, of course I missed something. Um, no, no, the clusters are ones up towards the front, midship, below ship, top, uh, top side, bottom side, mid side, I don't know, port, aft, fore, you know, it, it, and it's thrusting to the starboard. So the names are trying to explain what's going on with them, especially engines, or anything where there's a large cluster like the ramps. RCS 25. I do not have 25 RC RCS anymore. Um, but they were all named to try to help you get an idea of where they were in case you wanted to know for some reason. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So, oh, that was a big lightning. I. This was an interesting planet. I spent a lot of time exploring this because I was sure the thing I needed was here and it. It never ended up being. There was one. It was one of those problems where the mission that I was supposed to follow just never spawned a thing that I needed, and so I couldn't finish it. Anyway, like I said, everything changed. Oh, I'm I've borrowed this as the symbol for Val Dry Forge, by the way. So, as you can see, it's on everything. Um, so thinking, thinking, thinking. Oh yeah, well, this will be it for the season. They changed everything out from under me. The only way I'm going to be able to make the third and possibly final edition of my goal is to start over. I'm going to try to make, to just sort of forge through it really quick on a personal level, get enough of a base going, collect enough supplies to um, make this ship again, and then dismantle it to start more as the outline of the third stage. Uh, and I'm going to try to do like a montage episode just to skim everybody through, but that's going to take a long time. So you should expect that the time slot used for this series is going to be um, empty for maybe a few months. Maybe a few months. The other two time slots for Dwarf Fortress and Ark are going to remain intact. Um, but I will be back with this because I have promised myself that I'll finish all three stages of the project. But because the alpha, again, keeps changing out from under me, uh, there will be an interruption. So thanks for watching. Thanks for putting up with all this. And uh, come again when it's back. Thanks.